Hello everyone. Uh, yes, I do own an acoustic guitar. So here's a lesson with an acoustic and welcome to the Stitch Method and welcome to the, uh, the concept of where do these borrowed chords quote-unquote come from. Um, I've seen a lot of um, ideas on explaining how borrowed chords worked and this is my take on it. Now, before I really begin, I want to let you know what I'm referring to is when you have a chord sequence um, that's within a certain key and all of a sudden there's a chord that doesn't belong. And the question is, well, where'd that come from? And, and what's the theory behind it? Now, this is just one explanation. Uh, the biggest explanation, probably the most popular explanation, is that the artist who is writing the song um, heard it in his head. And that's what happens a lot. We hear things in our head when we're writing, and it, it ends up being in, in a, a chord that doesn't belong in the key, and we like it, and we stick with it. And this happens all the time. But here's an explanation as to why one of the most common, quote-unquote, borrowed chord sequences work. So I'll explain what I'm talking about. Uh, one of my uh, favorite bands, I'm a fly, flying here? <laughs> Great. Uh, one of my favorite bands uh, is Wilco. And Wilco <clears throat> has several songs where they have an A, a C, a G, and a D. And you go, what the heck was that? Because in the key of D, we have uh, D, G, and A. Fantastic. But where does that C come from? Or if you look at songs, there's a bluegrass song that I'm going over with one of my students right now, and it has G, F, and C. Great. Uh, but then there's a D in there. And it's like, well, why is there a D in there? Why does that belong? Why would they take that chord and make it major when it should be minor? So let's talk about how this works. Uh, to make a long story short, and I'm going to start putting these things up on the screen, hopefully, if I'm not tired of editing. Um, we're going to talk about basic 1-4-5 progressions right now. And now if my friend Sean Daniel is, is watching, sorry buddy, cover your ears. Anyway, um, let's take a 1-4-5 in C. C, F, and G. Now, when you're writing in the key of C, you expect to see C's and F's. Excuse me, my guitar is not on screen. Now it is. Good. I swear I know what I'm doing. And G. Uh, we'll see an A minor in there. We'll see a D minor in there sometimes and an E minor in there. And these chords are all go together in any order. But sometimes you have a song that goes G, C, F, D. And you can hear, it sounds great. Ain't nothing wrong with this. But why does it work? Well, let me explain. The key of C, uh, the, the uh, chords are C major, uh, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. And if you're wondering where those uh, came from, um, I'll be doing a video to get down to the nitty gritty of all this stuff, but I think you can, you can understand what I'm doing without that type of background, hopefully. So now, the D major does not belong in C, but if you listen to those ones, fours, and fives, uh, C, F, and G. All right, so the C and the G in this grouping of one, fours, and fives is not exclusive to the key of C. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go to the next key that is built from what's called the circle of fifths, which my friend Sean Daniel again, what's up buddy, has a great video on it, I'll be doing a video on it, the next key that you can develop after the key of C is the key of G. Now, in the key of G, those chords are G major, A minor, uh, B minor, C major, D major, and E minor. I'm staying away from the sevens. And don't yell at me right now. We're not in jazz. All right. So now, but if you listen carefully, the G is the one, the C is the four, and the D is the five. So here's a grouping of uh, G, C, and D, and they go together really well. But again, if you listen, G and C is the one four combination of the key of G, and the C and G is the one and five in the key of C. So I don't want this to get too heavy, but if you listen carefully, the C, the F, and the G, and you add the D, work. Why? Because we're bouncing between what I call two, I guess, parallel keys. I really don't know the term for it. But the key that's formed after in the circle of fifths. So you have C, F, G, and then you have the next key would be G, C, and D. So you can mix all of these chords because two of them travel between one key and the other. So if I write a song in C's, F's and G's, C's, F's, and G's, and I take it to a D, it's going to sound fine. And how do we 
know it sounds fine? Because of Credence Qu Clearwater Revival, I couldn't even say it. Their song Fortune the Sun goes G F C and G. G F C and G. And then the chorus is G. in C, then it goes to the 1, 4, and 5 in G. Now those are separated between verse and chorus. But if you take uh, like Lenny Kravitz, who has an A, a C, a G, and a D, we can explain that too. So first, the first half was talking about in the key of C, taking the D from the key of G, which has the same 1, 4, combination. I hope this all makes sense. Oh my gosh. All right, so if this is making sense, continue on. If not, just disregard this. All right, so now, if we're in the key of D, okay, the 1, 4, and 5 in D, and this will be up on your screen, is D, G, and A. So listen to those notes again. D, G, and A. All right, so if I know for a fact that in the key of G again, we have a G and a D, and they go together, but the C is the 4. So here I have the 1, 4, and 5 in D, D, G, and A. Two of those chords are in the key of G as well, but the missing chord is the C in the key of G. So if you have a song that G, D, and A, you can bring in the C gladly because it's kind of attached to that G and D combo as well. And this is how people borrow chords. It's not, um, not necessarily, if you find this type of movement where you're plucking the chord out of the next sequence of keys that you can make according to the circle of fifths, then all of a sudden you can realize why songs have C, F, G, and D, or D, G, A, and C, and it keeps on going. Um, and, and what I'll do for you is I'll put up on the screen like I said, but you want to try using this in your own way. If you have a song that's G's, D's, and A's, G's, a good idea for a chorus is bring in the missing chord from one set of one fourth of fives. So, I hope I did my job in explaining this. I really hope I did my job. To make the longest story short, this is, the short, this is one possible way to borrow uh, chords. There's many ways, but this way is an obvious way, and you see it all the time. So I'll do it in one more key so we understand it. Let's just do it in the key of, um, we'll say, E. So we have E is the 1, A is the 4, and B is the 5. Okay, so where can we find another set of 1s, 4s, and 5s that share some of those notes? So E... A. Oh, awesome. Uh, that is in the key of A. A, D, and E is a 1, 4, and 5 combination in the key of A. So the, you can hear E and A is in the key of E, but it's not exclusive to the key of E. The E and A is also in the key of A, and there's the D in the key of A, and there's the B in the key of E. So here we have uh, common progressions, E's, A's, The last thing I'll say is that major chords sound good together no matter what, because they're gorgeous, they're balanced, and they sound good. But putting them together with a little bit of theory really helps make a, a, a song move. So I hope this whole made sense. I'm going to watch it to make sure it did, and hopefully the uh, graphics I put up helped. All right, guys, so if you're into songwriting, which uh, I don't know if you watched it, but again, me and my friend Sean Daniel have a video out that we're going to be uh, writing a song with the entire world, pretty much, uh, step by step. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, this is a task or a, a, a trick that we might employ. We'll see how it goes. But again, if you're writing songs, feel free to look up a circle of fifths and see the ones, fours, and fives as they move in that circle of fifths and, um, and enjoy. All right, guys, take care. Hope you learned something, and I hope I presented it well enough. See you soon.